Hello everybody here at the Shala and our extended family out on our YouTube channel. So we are continuing our studies of the Heart of Yoga by Desika Char. We are on chapters four and five. What were we studying last week that we're still studying this week? Starts with an A. Asanas. So uh, we were studying asanas, our postures or the way that we sit in our body or our mind being still. Um, and the aspects of stira sukham. So we were kind of using a little hand gesture for yin and yang to describe how in each pose that we do in every aspect or element of the practice, we're trying to be focused and strong and grounded and at the same time, very light, very fluid, very soft. Um, so continuing that, Deskachar talks in this chapter a little bit about something called vinyasa krama. And that is sort of a new term for us. We say vinyasa, but we don't use the term krama as much. Does anyone remember what that means? Nimu, you probably know. It's, yeah, so the, the vinyasa is the breath and movement, which we also do a vinyasa practice. Um, the krama meaning sort of step by step. And, um, and Deskachar describes that as being something that is uh, a practice that we, we think about that is sensible. I love his words that he uses. I love it when English is someone's second language. He says, the practice should be sensible and well-structured. So it's step by step in the way that we do one asana after another and it's sequential and it builds and one thing warms us up for another or if we do uh, one pose um, that opens up the front then we do another pose that opens up the back for what we would call a counter pose or if we do the right side we always do the left side so even if I adjust you hopefully I always if I um, adjust you on your left side I might ask you please go back to your right side because I I said, I don't want you to be lopsided today, right? We want to always do things that are equally balanced out. And we talked a little bit earlier in the semester about how it's dynamic and that we root down and we reach up or we push forward and we pull back. And everything has that equal um, opening aspect for us. Um, but also in the way that we, as Deskachar says, structure a practice. So in Krama Yoga, they have this very beautiful sequencing that they put together like one pose right next to another or four poses. Um, vinyasas that, that move in and out. When I studied with Desigachar years ago in um, San Francisco, I really loved, he had this beautiful, almost like a moon sequence where we inhaled our arms up, we exhaled to the floor and went into like a beautiful child's pose and then to a cat cow and then into Ustrasana and repeated that. It was like our vinyasa but a little bit more uh, gentle, not as much strength work but beautiful in its vinyasa breath and movement and really holding the mind in the practice. Um, but in that practice, um, it may shift, it may change, and so you sort of create a practice. What's different about Ashtanga, of course, for us is it's like ready-made, right? We already have a sensible sequence that's already laid out for us. And so the Ashtangis actually memorize that. And it makes so much sense. For me, I think one of the reasons I fell so in love with Ashtanga is because the way that the asanas were laid out and the vinyasa entrances and exits in between just felt so good to my body and so right to my mind and um, just felt like home to me. You know, so a little bit of understanding of that is that our sequence is we always begin with sun salutes. Then we move into the standing sequence where we ground and we root and we stretch and we lengthen the spine and we twist the spine. We get to the floor and then we do some of the same thing with lengthening the spine from rooting through the floor and more twists that add some more hip openers and different things of the sort. And the Ashtangi is unique in the floor sequence, why? We keep doing vinyasas, right? And so that's this beautiful idea of we're going to keep the body warm through vinyasas on the floor, but also it keeps the mind engaged. So we're not just like, oh, I'm on the right, now I'm going to go to my left. And, you know, it's this beautiful way of keeping us engaged. And then, you know, we get to the back bends, which we've really warmed up our body for. And we've done all those up dogs and different hip openers and stuff to prepare us for um, our back bends. And then we get to closing sequence. Now what is closing sequence for us? 
You know, it's interesting because if we were to talk to an athlete, they might say, oh, you know, their closing is when they stretch and they cool down. And although we have that aspect, for us, it's, it's so much more than that. For us, a closing sequence is like the grand finale. You know, and, and to understand the science of yoga is that we've really um, been doing all this twisting and all this lengthening in the spine and stuff to get the toxins to surface, the, the internal organs to cleanse. And so at the end of the practice, we invert, right? That's considered our closing sequence. And in inverting, we switch the direction of the flame, the, the values that we studied. And when the flame is switched back that direction where we've just pushed all these toxins to this center, right? Then what do we do when we switch the, the direction of the fire? We burn them. Yeah, that's, that is like our grand finale of detoxification in the, in the Ashtanga system. So we burn off the toxins then. It becomes this beautiful cleansing practice for us and we invert for a lot of reasons, but that being one of them. And of course then our, our headstand at the end is our grand finale as well where we're inverting and it's in an advanced inversion. Um, and of course, Shavasana, right? So that is our beautiful sequence. And in that, of course, then we have second series Nadi Shodna and how we progress in, um, in our sequences. But, but all of that, once you've done it, makes so much sense. If you've ever gone to a practice um, that was different, it wasn't Ashtanga, maybe they wanted to start with some stretching and some shoulder stands or something, you might have felt like, whoa, this just feels weird. You know, anything for me where we're not warming our bodies and our minds up with sun salutes, I'm just, you know, it doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel like home. Um, so within that, we have this beautiful frame that we work within in Ashtanga, but also within that, you know, um, Deskachar and Patabi Joyce and Iyengar were all very, um, very known for saying that you have to practice with wisdom and intelligence. So to me, what that means, and of course he said sensibility, right? Is that even within the system, I have this system, but depending on what's going on for me, I have to make choices within that system. So if my shoulder is injured, maybe I have to modify the way I do my vinyasa entrance and exit. You know, someone today came in that um, injured their ankle, they sprained their ankle. So there are certain poses that they had to do differently or possibly um, modify or even skip, you know, if we have something that we're injured enough that it would hurt us to actually do the pose. Um, Daskachar talks about headstand. You know, if you have a neck injury, folks, you can't just say, well, that's part of the sequence. That's when this comes and I have to do headstand. Then we look at what's a good inversion that we could alternate for that or modify for that during this time. So, you know, I, I want to always give you guys permission to um, to work with your practice and to know that one of the beautiful things about yoga, but Ashtanga in particular, is that you really own it. It's your practice. And within this beautiful frame, you always have to find yourself. There's no competition. There's no one to impress. There's no one thing to prove here. Nothing to figure out on your mats. And so once you get here, I always tell um, you guys, and I hope you remember this in your mind, um, that you, when you show up on your mat, every day that you show up, is, it's like a dance. You know, there are times where I'm doing my asana dance, my vinyasa dance, where I feel like I'm dancing forward, you know, and maybe this summertime you feel that beautiful sense of transformation and things opening and it feels so good, you know. But there are times in my practice as well where I'm just like dancing in the same place for a while, you know, and I'm kind of holding that space for myself to just stay healthy in my energy and my body and just what I'm doing today, I might be doing tomorrow and the next week and the next week and the next week and and that's good too you know just dancing in that place just keeps me so healthy and there are also times when I know that I need to dance backwards a little bit I need to modify things I need to shift things I need to take care of myself in that way and that's good too you know and so if we always just come to our mats and say you know it's a dance I'm just gonna come here and be grateful that I can dance today and be okay with what direction that might take us you know that's the beauty of our um, sensibility and wisdom within this, this um, sequencing that we were given in Ashtanga. So in that, I know we've been talking about darshan on that mirror that we hold up to ourselves. I think one of the greatest gifts of this for me is that um, I really learned to be true to myself. You know, even though we have this, this practice, 
we have to find ourselves within it and learn that the most important thing is that we honor ourselves and we be true to ourselves within that. So I'm going to finish with two of my favorite quotes that speak to that. And the first one is, of course, by Shakespeare from the play Hamlet. And Polonius said this to his son at a very crucial part of the play. He said, this above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow the night, the day, thou cast not be false to any other man. So it's beautiful. Um, was a mantra for us to say, to be true to ourselves, you know. The practice teaches us that, to respect ourselves. And the second one is by um, Johann von Gut. As soon as you trust yourself, you will know how to live. I love that as well. So, as always, I honor each one of you for the two hours you'll do here today and how you're going to take that into the other 22 hours of your life. Namaste.